Gavin Newsom has been making a lot of news lately. He has been in the news quite a bit. There's obviously speculation about him uh, swapping out or him being swapped in for Joe Biden uh, if Biden uh, is not able to run. Because of that, he's been on a veto spree where he's been sort of trying to angle for national positioning by, you know, um, making himself come across a little less California, maybe a little more Ohio, although not all of his (laughs) decisions really make sense in that respect. But uh, of course, Dianne Feinstein died uh, last week, and uh, that left her Senate seat uh, open right now. It was open in the sense that Feinstein was obviously not seeking re-election, and so there's a Senate primary underway. The three most noteworthy candidates in that primary are uh, Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, who has the blessing of the party leadership, uh, and Barbara Lee, progressive black woman Barbara Lee. Now, the fact that she's a black woman is significant because Gavin Newsom promised to appoint a black woman to the Senate should Feinstein not be able to finish her term. And so conventional wisdom uh, was such that if Feinstein does not finish her term and Newsom has to appoint a replacement, being that Barbara Lee obviously wants the job, why not give it to her? Well, what did Tucker Carlson say last uh, week that we actually covered on Sunday? He said, you know, these elites are two, three steps ahead of you, right? Don't ever think you can predict what they're going to do because turns out Gavin Newsom chose None of those three candidates, even though he promised to pick a black woman, instead, he picked a black woman named LaFonza Butler to fill Dianne Feinstein's Senate seat. Butler is the head of the group Emily's List, which works to elect Democratic women. She will be the third black woman in history to serve in the Senate. She's also a lesbian, so he gets extra points for that, I guess. Uh, This is from MS. uh, I'm sorry, this is from NBC News. California Governor Gavin Newsom has chosen LaFonza Butler, the president of Emily's List, to fill the seat of the late Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein. The governor's office confirmed to NBC News. She will be the third black woman ever to serve in the Senate, as well as the first openly LGBTQ person to represent California in the chamber. Political first reported Newsom's choice of Butler. Uh, Feinstein obviously died Thursday at age 90. Butler has led Emily's List, which works to elect Democratic women who support abortion rights since 2021, when she became the first black woman to lead the organization. On Friday, she posted a tribute to Feinstein on social media, calling her a titan in the Senate and a legendary figure for women in uh, in politics around the country. Now, who is this person? Well, Feinstein's successor consulted for Uber and Airbnb. This is Politico's influence watch sort of newsletter. Uh, uh, Okay, Feinstein died. We need someone worse than Feinstein, but black. (laughs) Right, exactly. Somebody. Right, right. Is there a black woman to the right of Dianne Feinstein who we can put (laughs) in here? And California's a big state, so you got a lot of options, so your odds are pretty good. And uh, he found one. California Governor Gavin Newsom's appointment of Emily's List President LaFonza Butler to fill the Senate seat left vacant by Dianne Feinstein elevates a seasoned political player and a successful fundraiser, of course, to the highly sought-after post. But P.I., political influence, that's the publication, is diving into Butler's past in the corporate influence world, first as a consultant at the California firm SCRB Strategies, and then with Airbnb's government affairs team. SCRB Strategies is well known for its roster of political clients. Vice President Kamala Harris, oh, or PACs affiliated with her firm, uh, with with the firm, sorry, paid more than $1.4 million over the course of Harris's campaigns for Senate and President, according to campaign finance disclosures. Additional, additional clients have included Newsom himself, former California Governor Jerry Brown, the DCCC, and Harris's Senate successor, Alex Padilla. But it's Butler's corporate consulting work that has drawn attention from government watchdogs. SCRB Strategies was paid $185,000 from 2019 through 2020 for work for Uber, California's lobbying record show. At the time, Uber and other gig companies were in the midst of a clash with labor groups and California Democrats over a bill that would have allowed gig workers to be classified as employees with the right to benefits 
rather than independent contractors. Bloomberg reported in 2019 that Butler, a labor organizer who spent more than a decade as a top leader in the SEIU's California chapter, had been advising Uber and acting as a liaison in its dealings with unions, while the gig worker bill, one of labor's top priorities, was working its way through the legislature. Butler's past work for Uber is prompting concerns from one watchdog group in the present day. Quote, this is a connection that is not just aesthetically unpleasing, it is, subst- it is substantively relevant to how Butler will carry on her role as senator, and big tech is one of the few potential bipartisan areas of agreement, said Jeff Hauser, head of the Revolving Door Project, pointing to antitrust legislation stymied last Congress in part by Democrats with ties to tech giants. Unfortunately, I think Butler has some of the same flaws that characterize not only Newsom, but Zoe Lofgren and Lou Correa uh, and many other California Democrats, which is they think the interests of big tech are the interests of Californians or Americans more generally, he told P.I. No, they don't think that the interests of big tech are the interests of Californians and more Americans. They work for big tech, so they're trying to stack the deck in the favor of big tech. And I think that her work against Uber drivers is evidence of that. Almost done here. Um, Butler also parlayed her organizing background into helping Airbnb navigate political dynamics. In her various roles over the years, LaFonza has successfully managed the politics with electeds in California with members of Congress and with the administration, says Oscar Ramirez, a founder at Fulcrum Public Affairs uh, and one of Airbnb's outside lobbyists. Knowing how to work with the right people in the right way is part of what she did very well. Okay, so this is all a long way of saying he apparently just appointed a lobbyist. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like she's basically... A, a, right. a lobbyist right. and you know the wisdom which, of doing which, that all right man she's just got the job title what's that go ahead i, I didn't they're hear all lobbyists. she's just got the title well she's got the title and she has the official uh gig and that's important that actually made it a smart call because he doesn't have to worry about lafonza butler actually seeking an elected term like she's a career money bundler Right. I mean, she mm-hmm. she her her world is that world. She probably doesn't really want to serve in the Senate for an extended period of time, which made her a smart pick from Newsom's standpoint, uh, because he doesn't now have to worry about Adam Schiff not being the next senator from the state um, because she will bow out like he picked a, a lackey. He picked a Democratic Party crony. Like the most vulgar example of that, like the most obvious example of someone who was just bundling money for Democrats and in turn taking orders from Democrats. Oh, you need me to fill in for a year while this primary is going on until the next election? Sure, no problem. Then I'll go back to my cushy gig, right? Uh, Right. He doesn't have to worry about her wanting to stick around because the fear here, and this is why we thought at least Nancy Pelosi was so adamant that Dianne Feinstein was fit to serve and good to go. Um, They wanted Feinstein to stay in that seat because they didn't want to force Newsom into a spot where he would have to appoint someone who's not Adam Schiff, because if he appoints someone, they become the incumbent. If they then seek an elected term, it becomes very difficult to unseat them. It's very hard to beat an incumbent. Of course, again, he's three steps ahead. He just said, well, we'll give this lobbyist a gig for a year and then she'll go away because that's what she always does. She always do. She does what we want. We give her what what she needs. Um, Revolving door, as was mentioned there. Yeah, well, I think part of what's happening here also is uh, Pelosi and the Democratic leadership really want Adam shit. Um, yes, of course. And, oh, they're all in for him. Yeah. If he appoints Barbara Lee, he's crossing those people. Of course. And that's not a good move for a guy who wants their support if Biden stumbles or for 2028. So this was the way he got to dodge it. And at the same time, maintain his uh, liberal bona fides by appointing a gay black woman. Right? So he's, he's got all his bases covered, you know, look, look at my progressive choice that won't piss anybody off. And I'm not putting my thumb on the scale for anyone in this primary. You know, I just went to a third party who, as you say, is not going to 
be com- competing against Barbara Lee and Adam Shit. Like I say, it reminds me of Bill Clinton. He's like no charisma Bill Clinton. That's a very Bill Clinton kind of a move. Well, I don't want to get the caucus angry with me. And I certainly don't want to put anybody in that office who has actual progressive values. Oh, I have a crony here in the closet. Let me uh, (laughs) put her uh, in the position, have it all ways for all people. That's it, man. He's like, Bill, it's, it's, it's Bill Clinton 2.0. Yes. Yeah. That is exactly the kind of move that, that he would make. And look, he weaseled his way out of it in a way that, you know, we, we, we couldn't see coming. That's what Tucker Carlson said in that monologue last week. He says, you know, you think it's going to be all 2024. It's going to be Biden and Trump and maybe one of them will win. He says, no, the, these operatives are always 10 steps out in front of you, right? The assumption was, well, Feinstein better make it over the finish line. Otherwise, he's going to be forced to pick Barbara Lee. No, no. He pulls this name out of the deck no one's ever heard of. Right. This is a rich woman who's been a loyal foot soldier for the neoliberal wing of the Democratic Party. Um, Good anti-labor bona fides there with the, you know, Uber uh, Airbnb. Obviously, their whole their whole political battle has to do with the fact that they drive up the price of real Mm -hmm. estate and she goes to bat for them. And so, uh, yeah, it all worked out. It all worked out. And now it looks like Adam Schiff will probably win that that race. Um, and he'll become the senator, and she'll go back to her gig, and it'll all be happily ever after. Although I have to say, though, I, and I was actually surprised about this, the Congressional Black Caucus, far from a left-wing organization, actually was pressing uh, Newsom to pick Lee. They actually wanted him to pick Barbara Lee, which I'm oh, actually very surprised by that. Interesting. Well, you know, she's not left-left. She's just, you know, I mean, they don't like anybody to the left of Francisco Franco in the Democratic Party. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, she's too left for them. Right. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, that makes a good point. Any Anyone who still harbors any notion that the Democratic Party is reformable, look at look at this. Look at this, right? Uh, they're they're going to jump up and down any time, you know, uh, a, a progressive uh, white man is running. Um, oh, there are white supremacists, they're racist, and they're going to find some corporate goon who fits an identity box, and they're they're going to they're going to try to claim moral superiority by running that person. But if their goon is some white dude, uh, they're all in on that white dude, right? So Adam Shit versus Barbara Lee, in the end. They're going to go for the person who is their creature the most. But at the same time, we have to, you know, pretend. So we're going to appoint some corporate lobbyist gay black woman for 10 minutes until the person we actually <laughs> right. Adam Schitt, gets right. in there. This, this whole shell game that they're doing here, that's the Democrats. That's why it's useless to try to work within that party. Please clap. Yeah.